So let's begin part two of this video series on the origin and propagation of the action potential with the second part, the actual movement or propagation of the action potential down an axon or down the length of the neuron. So we saw in the previous video that the action potential is initiated when a threshold is reached and a depolarization phase begins where voltage-gated sodium channels open and sodium ions move down their electrical and chemical gradient into the cell. Eventually, those sodium channels will close as the inactivation gate blocks the voltage-gated sodium channel. And as a consequence, the voltage-gated potassium channels will open and the cell will hyperpolarize. Because those voltage-gated sodium channels close more quickly than the voltage-gated potassium channels do, there'll be the undershoot and the refractory period, which will take some time before the cell can actually come back to rest. But at this point, all we really discussed is that the axon potential is initiated, hopefully you remember, at the axon hillock of between the cell body and the axon of the neuron. How in the heck are we going to propagate this electrical signal on the length of the axon, which in some situations can be as long as several meters in, um, in certain organisms? Well, we're going to accomplish this using the same series of events that we learned about in the previous video, but in essence, passing this series of events along the length of an axon. And I'll try to show you that on some of the subsequent slides. So imagine that you have a cell at rest, or a neuron at rest in this case. We know the inside of the cell should be negative compared to the outside of the cell, which would be positive. The cell's resting potential potential will be somewhere between negative 70, and of course there will be more sodium ions on the outside compared to the inside of the cell, more potassium ions on the, outs on the inside of the cell compared to the outside. When we initiate that action potential, what I want you to begin to understand is that because we're going to initiate a change in the voltage across the cell membrane, we're also going to induce a current to form on the inside of the cell. From the previous video, I told you that V equals I times R. Remember, V is the voltage, I is the current, and the resistance is a constant. So voltage is proportional to current. So if I change the voltage, which we know is going to take place as the act potential is initiated, I'm also going to induce a current to form on the inside of the cell. So what you want to envision is that at some point along the length of the axon, the stimulus is going to be applied, threshold will be reached, sodium ion will begin to move into the cell, and this segment of the cell will become depolarized. As this voltage change takes place, current on the inside of the cell will begin to spread to neighboring locations along the axon. Since we're at the axon hillock, that point where the axon and, and the cell body meet, there's really only one direction for the signal to propagate. It is gonna propagate in both directions, but we're focusing on the unidirectionality of this signal moving along the length of the axon and not back along the length of the cell body towards the dendrites. So as that current moves, the current will actually be used to depolarize the next segment of the axon. That's going to look like this. So we induce the depolarization in one segment, the current begins to flow, and that current, assuming it's strong enough, and is capable of allowing this next segment of the neuron to reach threshold will trigger an action potential in the next part of the neuron. So what you have is the movement of an electrical signal, the movement of current through the interior of the axon. As the current moves, just like current moves through a wire, the current will initiate voltage changes across different segments of that axon membrane. So here we are moving a little bit forward along the, on the, on the length of the axon. This next, next segment has become depolarized. Voltage-gated sodium channels are opening. The action potential is being initiated while this third segment is still at rest. And the first segment that we started with is now in that refractory period. We're not told here whether it's the absolute or the relative refractory period. But regardless, we're still at a stage at which the cell has to come back to rest before it's going to be able to fire an action potential to its, fur to its fullest extent at the same stimulus magnitude that we started with at the beginning. So at this point, 
The current has spread, the voltage has changed across the membrane, and that third segment will be depolarized, and the action potential will be observed uh, in that final segment of the axon, at least as it is shown on this particular figure. So, one more time, the current in now that in the second segment has spread to the third segment, the third segment is becoming depolarized, and if that current is sufficient in magnitude to depolarize the third segment to threshold, then the action potential will be propagated to the third segment. So if you were to look at what was happening all the way down at the level of transport proteins or ion channels, what you'd find is that we're kind of starting in the middle of the axon here rather than at the axon hillock, but that's okay. We can see the open channels here. Let's go back to my pointer here. We can see the open channels here that are allowing potassium, uh, sorry, allowing sodium ion to move into the cell, while the channels right behind it are inactivated and are not allowing ions to cross the membrane. Channels ahead of the axon potential, channels along the axon in which the axon potential has not yet come in contact, uh, those channels are still closed, as we can see. A short period later, though, because that current is spreading along the length of the axon, neighboring channels become open, the cell, that part of the cell becomes depolarized, the current spreads a little bit further, and that act potential is propagated along the length of the axon. One way to think about this is to think about it in terms of a wave moving across the ocean. The height of the wave never really changes, uh, so the magnitude of the wave never really changes, but different parts of the ocean, if you will, experience the wave at different time points. Here's another look at what we just saw. This might be a little bit more clear. Here we are depolarizing the first segment of the axon. We can see the current spreading and the current being used to, to depolarize the next segment, causing it to reach threshold. And finally, at some later time point, that current has moved all the way down the length of the axon and the action potential has spread uh, down the length of, this, of, the, of the structure. So again, I like to give you multiple looks of this process. Again, here we can see sodium ion moving into the cell, depolarization being established, current spreading, current being used to depolarize the next segment while this first segment hyperpolarizes. There are those potassium ions leaving the cell. Current from the second segment is used to depolarize the third segment, and the act potential is propagated accordingly. So the last piece of the puzzle that I want to try to address is a uh, a piece that's rarely or rarely understood well by, by students as they study the nervous system. And that's how the act potential actually propagates in a myelinated neuron. You saw in the first video of this series that many neurons in the nervous system are myelinated. They are surrounded by this uh, neuroglial sheath, which encapsulates the, the axonal membrane. And these, my, this myelination is really important because it's going to speed up the rate at which the act potential can propagate along the length of the axon. But what's unfortunate is that many textbooks present this uh, signal transmission as jumping or leaping, um, often referred to as saltatory conduction. Now, while saltatory works in terms of describing the jumping piece, I want you to understand that this signal, the act potential in particular, is not actually jumping from one part of the neuron to the next. It's not like the wave that I used, uh, the wave analogy that I used earlier, is jumping from one part of the ocean to the other part of the ocean with no wave in between. Can you imagine if that happened? That would be ridiculous. So instead, what I want you to focus in on are the nodes that exist between the different neuroglial cells that have formed this myelin sheath. If you could zoom in on this node, what you'd find is that this is the location of those voltage-gated sodium channels and voltage-gated potassium channels. Those channels aren't located on the axon membrane directly beneath that neuroglial myelin sheath. And as a consequence, when we initiate that voltage change at the node, the current will spread through the axon to the next node. So if you were watching the action potential, it would be like it was appearing at one node and then jumping to the other node but that's not what actually is happening. Instead, it's the movement of current through the axon that allows the action potential to spread along the length of the neuron. So last but not least, why does it increase the rate 
of signal transduction across the axon? Well, it has everything to do with the number of channels that are opening and closing. If I can localize the channels that are opening and closing to discrete regions along the length of the axon, I'm going to decrease the amount of time that is required for that signal to be initiated and ultimately to be propagated along the length of the axon. So instead of having all of these channels open and close along the entire length of an unmyelinated axon, instead, because of myelination, I only have to worry about localized regions of channels opening and closing. That's going to speed up the rate at which the signal can be propagated uh, much, much, much faster, much, much more dramatically. All right, so that ends the second part of this video. As always, if you have questions, please come and talk to me.